Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my channel, Do Mystery Gaming. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the currency farming strategy that I deployed in 3.15 Expedition League to farm my headhunter in just under two weeks of league start. Now, the currency farming strategy that I deployed is nothing new and it's nothing crazy. Uh, you know, that's it's probably not even the best strategy that's out there right now. Uh, there are a number of other folks who have farmed their headhunter in a much shorter period of time than I did. Uh, but I still think this is a pretty good strategy. It's probably a B plus if I had to rate it. And the other beautiful thing about this strategy is that uh, it is extremely accessible. You know, it uh, it doesn't cost a lot to get going. Uh, it's not very difficult to get going. Uh, you know, there's not a lot you need to do. Uh, and you don't need an extremely character, strong character to even get started with this strategy. Um, it's extremely accessible. And so in a League Star situation, it's actually a very good way to uh, make currency if you are struggling. And so as you can see from the gameplay here, the strategy is farming maps in Lyra Arthane map region and taking advantage of the breach mechanic that's there, as well as the uh, heist mechanic that is there as well, uh, both being decently profitable. Uh, now I'll walk you through exactly, you know, which ascendancy nodes I took, what washstones I bought uh, and how I set everything up. And so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the farming strategy I went with is farming red maps in Lyra Arthane map region, which is the bottom right corner here. Uh, and in this region, I am farming a number of things. Uh, I am farming breaches for breach splinters. I am farming smugglers caches for heist materials. I am farming expeditions for artifacts, reroll currency, and more importantly, logbooks. Uh, I am farming the um, Maven invitations for uh, Watchstones. I am farming Conquerors and Cyrus. And within all that, I'm farming uh, specifically six socket items as well. So I'm going to walk you through uh, the whole setup here on how to do that. And also, uh, I've got a showcase of, you know, three maps of loot that I'll walk you through in terms of what kind of drops you're getting and how much value that is, you know, for each of those things that I've mentioned. Uh, but anyway, first and foremost, you do need to get your Atlas set up. You do want your character to be able to run red maps uh, comfortably, uh, anything level 80 plus. There is a reason for that because when you're farming Expedition, I level 80 logbooks sell for way more than uh, sub 80 ones. So I highly recommend if you can do them, uh, I level 80 plus. I farm tier 14 to 16 maps. Uh, but if you can't, you can drop a tier two. Uh, you know, this strategy works on all tiers. You can do it on white maps if you want. You know, your expedition loot, it's going to be a little less or your logbooks. Uh, but everything else like breach, breach sprinters, smugglers, caches, all that still uh, functions in the region if you can only do white maps. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that. But uh, I went with the red maps. So get yourself there. Uh, if you're having trouble sustaining maps in the region, uh, what you can do is you can drop two watchstones from each of these other regions. Uh, it'll drop you down to awakening level four. Uh, but then what's going to happen is the only red maps that can drop are, you know, in Lyra Arthane because the other watchstones are taken out of the other regions. Uh, and so if you're having trouble sustaining maps there, uh, go ahead and do that. From here, the eight important passives to get are the right four ones, which are breach related, uh, and more importantly, flash breach. Flash breach gets you 10 additional rare monsters for each breach that you encounter, and rare monsters drop splinters. And I'll show you in the loot later here, but each breach that you see with this flash breach, if you can clear it effectively, you're gonna drop about 10 to 20 splinters of that breach type for every breach that you see. And you can sometimes see multiple breaches in a map. The other important one to get is inside job. This uh, allows for uh, smugglers' caches to potentially spawn uh, in your maps. And when they do, uh, they drop, you know, a number of heist-related currencies that are quite valuable because heist uh, is very popular right now in terms of a currency farming machine. And so you're going to get five to 600 rogue markers every time you drop a smuggler's cache, which will sell. Uh, I ended up using mine, but, you know, you can sell them. Uh, you have potential to drop uh, blueprints as well, which are very valuable, especially uh, if you get the right ones, which is replica unique or unusual gems. And then on top of that, you can potentially get a fully revealed blueprint, which is just way more valuable even than an unrevealed blueprint. Uh, and uh, I did drop one of those. I ran it. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you didn't want to run it, you can sell those for quite a bit of money. Uh, and so 
those are worth a lot. And then the last two points, I went with Spores on the win. Absolutely not necessary. You can run this with the eight points here. This really does nothing. Uh, I have two points though, and there's really nothing else to get. Um, so, you know, I got that. So don't worry about that. Just make sure you have the eight and you can get going on this strategy. Now, uh, with the Watchstones, uh, I went with uh, uh, Geomancy Watchstones. Okay, Watchstones uh, have a suffix called of Geomancy, which gives you items found in areas have a percent chance to have the maximum number of sockets. This is what's allowing me to drop a ton of six socket items in these maps. Now, I'm not even min-maxed right now. Um, I've got 0.4 here, 0.3, 0.4, and 0.1. This, that makes 1.2 uh, percent. Uh, and these can roll up to 0.5% each, which is two if you get four of them. And then on top of that, if you had Uncharted Realms, which I don't even have, uh, that can boost it up to 2.5%. So I'm only half of the maximum potential here. And I'll show you the loot in a bit here. You still drop eight to 10 um six socket items every map and if you you know had you know the full 2.5 percent you can probably double that which is a lot of currency if you start adding it up and we'll do the math later as well uh but i decided to go with geomancy watchstones there is another route you can go which is uh getting cheyula's watchstones um which will you know uh, increase the chance that the breaches you see are Cheyula. Uh, this is also very, very good because Cheyula uh, splinters do sell for exponentially more than every other type. However, these watchstones are quite a bit more expensive. Uh, the platinum watchstones are like 60, 70 C for the base. And then if you get a Cheyula one, you're looking at maybe like 80, 90 chaos, even an exalt, depending on the tier that you roll per watchstone versus these geomancy ones are very cheap and easy to roll because the geomancy watchstones can roll on any type of watchstone. It can roll on chromium, titanium, platinum. Uh, and so you can get the cheap watchstones, you know, chromium and titanium watchstones go for less than 10 C now. Uh, and you can roll them yourself quite easily. They're very easy to roll as well. And so if you're, you don't have a lot of currency to invest, I would highly recommend, uh, you know, uh, going the geomancy route which is what i did for league star but if you do want to invest uh cheyula absolutely get four cheyula watchstones now in terms of what maps to run i mean you can run one map over and over again and if you did i would recommend bazaar because bazaar drops the uh, divination card saints treasure which is 10 for two exalt so that means each card is around 18 chaos right now so that is very valuable but what I did was I ran uh, assortment variety because I wanted to build the Maven bar as well so that every 10 maps I can do a Maven encounter and drop a watchstone. And uh, like I say there, if you drop a platinum watchstone, you're looking at, you know, 70 chaos uh, just like that. And then on top of that, you know, you're getting your Conquerors, you're getting your Cyrus, which is adding currency as well. I dropped an Awakener's Orb on one of my Cyrus, which is 4X. So uh, fantastic addition. Uh, additional currency there and then one last thing to talk about with the setup is that for every map i am running the breach scarab i was only running rusted which gives you an additional breach uh rusted scarabs are selling for one c each right now uh definitely worth it every beach that you encounter is going to drop more than one c guaranteed uh at least right now and so from here, uh, I did store the loot of three maps that I ran just to show you kind of typically what you might see from this strategy in terms of drops. And so the first thing I'll talk about is the six socket items from this first map here. Uh, this uh, dropped two, four, six, seven, uh, six socket items. The next one here dropped two, four, six, eight, nine. Uh, and then the third one here dropped even more, actually 11 of these. And so a typical map uh, does actually drop sort of somewhere around that eight to 12 and six socket items depending on your item quantity and now remember too that i'm only at 1.2 percent uh on my watch stones and you can min max that up to 2.5 so you can actually potentially get double the amount of drops that i get but i typically get sort of that eight to ten range and so let's just do some math on this one here this nine piece here each six socket item uh, sells for six jeweler ores which is 1.5 fusings which is three quarters of a chaos right now uh, and so each one of these is basically three quarters of a chaos. And so, you know, nine pieces would mean it's um, six and a half, seven chaos or so uh, worth of, of jeweler orbs just right there. Uh, and then on top of that, remember the second part of the strategy primarily is the breaches. 
And so each breach, uh, if you clear them, you know, full-ish, uh, or at least kill all the rares anyway, uh, you do end up with sort of 10 to 20 uh, splinters of that type. Uh, and the breach stones aren't selling quite as well as they did last league, and the prices are dropping quite rapidly. Uh, but they're still worth doing for now. You know, the breach uh, scarab was only 1c, and you're definitely getting more than that. Uh, you know, these uh, Zoff and Ash and Tall Splinters were maybe like 5 to 1 chaos or something, so this might be 3 chaos. Uh, but when you do land Ulnatal, uh, Ulnatal breach stone is 40 chaos, so, you know, this might be like 3 to 1, so this is like a stack of 5c right there. And if you do end up getting a Chiula breach, uh, those are super juicy because imagine this 16 stack of Chayula splinters. Chayula splinters are signed for 1C each. So this would be a 16C right there just on, on that, uh, you know, on top of, you know, these six items might be like that six to eight chaos. Uh, and so, you know, you're probably 10, 15C uh, just from those two things there. And then uh, on the next thing that you get out of these is the smugglers caches. I didn't actually get one in these first two maps, but this one here is pretty typical. You know, you'd end up with five to seven hundred rogue markers, uh, some contracts, some blueprints uh, potentially, and blueprints can sell for quite a bit depending on the type. And then on top of that, if you get the fully revealed blueprints, they'll sell for an obscene amount. I don't actually sell any of my high stuff. I, I run all of my high stuff, including all my rogue markers. Uh, and so uh, you can choose to do that as well. But if you want to sell it, uh, these blueprints can sell for quite a bit as well. But then on to the next part, which is the expeditions. Extremely, extremely juicy, okay? Don't skip your expeditions. Uh, this stuff sells for crazy, okay? These reroll currencies, this exotic coinage here, which is two gins, uh, this is selling for 6C each right now. So this is 12C right here, just like that, two coins. Uh, I think I had here... Uh, four burial medallions. These medallions are selling for 7C each right now. So this is 28 chaos right there. Okay, don't skip your expeditions. Uh, if you roll them properly, you do quite oftentimes get reroll currencies. These astragalus suffer a lot less. These are half a C each, but those other ones are definitely worth a lot. The artifacts sell uh, as well very easily if priced properly. Okay, they don't sell for crazy, but they do sell. And then finally, the logbooks, which I don't actually have one to show you here. Uh, but the logbooks, if they are item level 80 plus and they are Black Scythe, which is Tujin, or Knights of something, uh, they are selling for 40 or 50 chaos each, okay? Uh, over the last week of farming Lyra Arthane, I ended up with 19 logbooks uh, that were one of those two, and I sold them for 10 exalts, okay? 50c each. So it's actually insane if you drop one. So do them and get your logbooks you can easily just drop 50c right there in one of your maps uh and then on top of that you know uh, like i say your your normal drops and then of course like i say your uh maven you know every 10 maps you have potential to get your platinum watchstones for 60 70 chaos something like that and then uh and then your cyrus and your conqueror drops if you drop a hunter exalted orb that's another three to four x right there or awakeners orb four x uh, and so make sure you get those done as well. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I also stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Times are in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.